Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Beacon Pines. The last time we played this, we did an elaborate heist. We got into Perennial Harvest. We found the office of the founder, and Luke and the gang found out who the founder was. It was Solomon all along. But you already knew that. At least I hope so, because you better be watching the other videos that I will put links to in this one. Anyways, we are trapped in the founder's office. We can't get out. We're going to figure out how to get out and hopefully stop Solomon from wreaking havoc over the town and whatnot. But before we begin, if you are not subscribed already, make sure you smash that subscribe button and ding the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. Let's get into it, shall we? Come up in. Oh. Ears still ringing. Gran picked herself up off the ground. Through the dust and smoke, she looked over to see Mrs. Fratelli helping Hiram Tolliver to his feet. What? She'd had to beg, borrow, and steal to acquire those explosives. How many nights had she spent visualizing how she'd use them to make things right? And now, her one shot at destroying the source, that damned hole that swallowed so much of her life, was gone. Traded for this jagged hole in a wall and a foolhardy shot at rescuing Rollo. With Fratelli and Tolliver at her side, she stepped through. It was a strange feeling. The last time she'd stalked this maze of hallways, it was in a different body. They quickly rounded a corner to find a group of clipboards guarding a door. Something worth guarding is probably something worth seeing. She leapt forward, brandishing her cane. If her last chance at vengeance for things lost was truly gone, she would just have to fight to keep what she still had. Okay. Did she break in and bust in? All right! The Calvary's arrived! Gran, what are you doing here? Luca, what are you doing here? We're here to save Nelly. We're here to save Rolo. Hey, Mrs. Lucas Gran. It's awful nice of you. Oh yeah, and Luke, sorry, Rolo is an adult, but not really. I forgot that. <laughs> but I'm fine. Oh no, what did they? Gran, there's no time to explain. We have to go now. Come on, everyone, we've got a party to crash. They made their way out from deep within perennial harvest, just as Solomon finished up his speech. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. We've got to stop him! In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. No! Well, I guess that's it. We lost. I wouldn't be so sure about that. With a mischievous look, Beck elbowed Luca. Remember when I had the vial behind my back? I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little... Oh! Oh! Junk, change, or malice. Malice. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little malice. Malice? The whiskey from his office. Yeah, dude had an unfinished glass on his desk. Figured his grow juice could use a little hair of the dog. You can all call me Shoppa Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. Confetti, that's hilarious! 
gazed in stunned silence at the now empty stage. The quiet was broken when William Kerr sprinted off stage and into the distance. He was never seen around Beacon Pines or anywhere else for that matter again. Watching the silhouette of Kerr disappear over the horizon, Luca began to laugh. First, a low chuckle that became uncontrolled, heaving laughter. Through his tears, he was vaguely aware that the crowd had begun to laugh with him. Yeah, well, it was funny. Nobody expected confetti at the end, really? That was unexpected. Yeah! Perhaps a bit of an absurd ending for my taste, but who am I to say? I'm only writing the damn thing. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna pick another one. Okay, so oh, okay, so we've got more to choose from. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little. Let's do junk. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little junk. Can't wait to see the look on his face when he realizes he <laughs> drank his own cigar ash. No way. <laughs> How did the ashes get into the vial? It was pretty easy to mess with the vial when it was behind my back. Oh, that's sneaky. Well, it's a bad habit anyways. I always said bad habits are like 50 yard field goals. Huh? Hard to kick. <laughs> you can all call me Shoppa Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. He did? He does? Is he gonna go poof again? Oh no, he's gonna turn into cigarette ash. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, that's one way to kick a bad habit. Jeez! last of what was once sharper valentine wafted into the air the crowd began to disperse still numb from what they had just observed sharper valentine was gone for good his end would be a new beginning for beacon pines a new chance to let go of the things they had lost and grab hold of a new future the end okay well i'd be lying if i said that wasn't a bit gratifying a bit that was a lot if that feels to you like a good note to end on i won't stand in your way i mean we could just do the last one we may as well Ida tweaked his wonder potion with a little change. What change? Like pocket change? Your unlucky penny! Yeah, I plopped it into the vial when no one was looking. What's that gonna do? No idea. It's the beauty of science. Now we observe. You can all call me Shoppa Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand. Yeah, 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 we know. He's gonna he's gonna explode into a belching green mist again. What happened? Holy crap, he's a baby. What? Yeah, but he's still sharper, right? What he was no longer matters. This is an innocent ch Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Look at him. He's so grumpy. <laughs> I apologize for all the harm my father has caused you. Eris awkwardly cradled the squirming child. She looked to her brother, her voice shaking with uncertainty. Augustus, what do we... We do what Valentines always do. What must be done? I'll hurry home and prepare a crib for father... Uh, young shopper. That would be a great help. Thank you. She looked back down at the infant with equal parts kindness and terror in her eyes. With a shake of her head, Eris addressed the crowd with a stern scowl. Okay, everyone. 
the show is over. You may leave now. Epilogue. Oh, oh, we get an epilogue. Okay, great. Pine's coldest summer on record came and went without much fanfare. Folks shared what they had and none were left wanting. The new school year was ushered in by the falling leaves of autumn. After everything Luca, Rollo, and Beck had been through, middle school was bearable. The chill of winter didn't seem to bother people much. They kindled a hope for a better future in their hearts. When spring arrived, farmers planted their crops with a sense of joy and optimism. And as the dawn of the first day of summer came again, its light slowly spread through the shallow valley. It crept over the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, and came to rest on a young boy sleeping at dawn. His mind at peace, knowing he is here for a reason. Let's go. I don't know where we're going. Oh, can I talk to the radio? Oh, I can. Rolo, are you up yet? Roger that. It's a beautiful day at Mission Control. You gonna swing by? Be there in a minute. All right. There we go. We're gonna check with Rolo at Treehouse. Anything else that I can look at? No? Okay, great. Let's go. Can I open this door yet? Over time, Eleanor began moving Walt's old things out of the closet and into storage. Oh yeah, because Gran is mom. Can we go Eleanor in here yet? Eleanor had moved back into her bedroom, and now that she wasn't sneaking out late, she even slept there most nights. Well, that's good. Where is, where is the old bat? Fran! Let's just chill for a minute. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we just got to hang out for a little bit. Perfect. Love it. There she is. Hi, are you... Just going to open that. No, I'll close it. I promise. I'm sorry. Are you selling jam still? Mom, I'm ready to go now. You go on without me. I'll meet you there. I've got a batch of jam to finish jarring. It's funny, I only started making jam as a way to send messages without anyone noticing. But now, I enjoy it. Well, that's good. Bye! Okay, let's go. Oh, hey! What's up? You and Rolo have big plans for that little treehouse. Yeah, it started getting crowded after we revoked max capacity, one Rolo, one Luca rule. So we decided to expand. But at least we've got some help with that. How's the intern at Nellie's and Alana's shop going? It's been great. I'm hoping it helps me get into the School of Agriculture up at the state. Also, Nellie said she'd write a letter of recommendation, which would be huge. I just can't help but worry about leaving Rolo. He's grown up so fast, but he's still my little brother. Yeah, he had a heck of a growth spurt. I don't just mean grown, literally. This morning he was up and finished chores before I even had breakfast. Well, some of that might be his excitement about the treehouse renovations. Don't tell him this, because it'll go to his head. But I'm really proud of that little punk. I'm sure he feels the same way. But he just... Too dang proud to tell you. I know. What a good sister. Oh, hello. Hey, Gus. How's the tree planting going? Couldn't be better. I'm so grateful to Alana and Nelly for letting me help. Why am I talking like that? It's because he's happy. He's not depressed anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I just wasn't built to be a mayor, but too much bureaucracy. Gus, we finished cleaning the sidewalks. What's the next? The perennial harvest collapsed. Most of the clipboards skipped town. But some stuck around and dedicated themselves to making things right. Anyone with a knack for art can help paint the new offices. 
You can count on us. Well, it looks like you really found your calling. I never felt this comfortable telling people what to do. Now, this right here. This is something I can be proud of. All right, let's go. A little higher. Yup. A little lower. Yup. Little higher. Yup. I'm telling ya, the angle isn't the issue. We need more power to the radio. Luca, there you are. Would you tell him it's not the angle? Hey, I'm not in charge of the antenna redesign. Fine, fine. Iggy, just don't do anything drastic till we get back. Who, me? Tish, you're in charge while I'm gone. Yup. They'll be fine, right? It'll be fine. If we really want mission control to turn into something bigger and better, we have to loosen a, our grip a little bit. Oh, you're right. Lead the way. All right, going to Bex now. All right, let's go. Ah, we don't need to talk to them. We're just going to go see your kid. It's fine. Wait, hold on. They changed the name of it. Slow and dirty harvest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, how's baby? How's the baby? Young Mr. Van Horn. How's little Solomon? Or uh, Sharper doing? Young Sharper seems to enjoy nature more than I. So we do a lot of strolling these days. Has he, uh, uh, you know, attempted to crawl out of his crib and plot world domination? Yeah. Thankfully, no. I spoke at length with Dr. Moodwell, and she feels that Sharper's infant mind was not developed enough to retain his previous memories. For all intents and purposes, the child is unmolded clay. Let's hope he's a little nicer the second time around. That is the objective, yes. But really, all I can do is try and hope. Two activities I endeavoring to find less distasteful. Well, I think you're doing a great job. And the whole town is ready to help out however we can. I can't wait to teach him to throw a baseball. Eris did her best to ignore the tears welling in her eyes. That would be acceptable. All right, bye. Oh my God, why are there so many bunnies? There are so many bunnies. Hey, I'm Mr. Duncreed. I'm gonna go see my dad in a bit. Do you wanna come with? Even after everything I did, you still. Mr. Duncreed shook his head. You really are your father's son, aren't you? I don't think I'm ready for that yet. Well, you're always invited. I'd bitty love to hear from you. I'll visit Walt in my own time. You run along now. All right, bye. Why are there so many bunnies? Hi, bunnies. With perennial harvest gone, the transportation tubes were left unused. Come one, come all. No one is too big, no one is too small for Jeff's wild ride. Maybe oh my not god. Completely unused. Just one piece of candy. For the ride of your life. Who's next? Beep, 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 beep. Oh my god, that's so funny. Oh hey, any bugs? Guess what? Yesterday I saw a Dynastus Tyotas. And that's good. It's great! I haven't spotted one of those in years. At this rate, Beacon Pines is gonna become the bug capital of the country. All right. Oh, hey, a bee. Luca peeked up at the 
beehive. It appeared to be deserted. That's strange. Oh, okay. Hey, Beck! What's up? I have news I think you'll enjoy. This, on, this morning, I unpacked my last box. You're officially moved in! It's just a box. Let's not blow this out of proportion. Sounds an awful like putting down roots. I guess I decided this place is root worthy. You're gonna be stuck with me for the foreseeable future. I do have to warn you, most years aren't gonna be as interesting as this one. I think I'll manage. Ready? Before we go, there's a bit of a surprise. Okay. Oh, it's a tree. <gasps> My mom's prepared this tree especially for you. They didn't have to do that. It wasn't just them. Just about the whole town pitched in. We all owe you. It should do okay on the cold of old Beacon Pines and thrive as things warm up. That's perfect. When you're ready, take Jeff's wild ride to Old Beacon Pines. Oh, right, because that's where his dad is. I forgot. It's so confusing. Okay, let's go. Ah, you got it. Now that's a good looking tree. Being a special occasion and whatnot, this ride's on the house. You're gonna wanna hang on tight to that little tree. All right, here we go. Oh. I think this is it. Yeah, I think so too. Oh, the, the narrator's crying. I thought it was Luca. But then you came along. I, I don't know exactly how to thank you. It's hard to explain how much this means to me. It's funny, now that our time together is finally ending, I'm at a loss for words. Let's just watch the end together. Done. A good little tree. The best little tree. Thank you, children. This means a lot. Yeah, thanks for everything. Shucks, I only did what any super awesome best buddy would have done. We should probably give you some alone time now. You good? Yeah, I am. It's been a wild year. How are you feeling? Everyone keeps asking me that. I'm fine, really. Pa always says the only thing fitter than a fiddle is a cello. I feel like a dang cello! Well, if you ever stop feeling like a cello, I'm here for you. I know. You've done... You don't even have to say it. You two make an awesome pair. Excuse me? We're a trio now. Yep. I... Thanks. There's just one thing missing now that you've got a partner group. Missing? Let me tell you a little story about a man named Hank Atomic. Oh God, it won't be long. We'll be waiting for you back at the phone booth. I found the perfect way to start our summer. You've got some good friends. I'm so proud of you. Your father would be so proud. I know. Mom, can I ask you a question? Do you ever dream about dad? Not a night goes by that I don't. Are you ever afraid that you're going to forget him? Forget what he looked like? Forget his voice? Oh. No, because so much of him lives on in you. He loved that old tree, but I know he would have loved this one more because his two favorite people planted it. 
I'll give you two a moment. Hey, Dad. Dr. Modewell says that over the next few years, this place should warm up so you won't have to be so cold for much longer. I think I finally understand why you left that night. There were things you believed in, big things. Those beliefs were the things that made you, you. If you wouldn't have stood up for, to Sharper, stood up for what you believed in, you wouldn't have been the same person anymore. You had to go. But that didn't mean you loved us any less. I might not visit you as much as I used to. I know you understand. I'm okay. I'm okay. Solid as a rock. Is that the end? Yeah, that's the end. What a cute and wholesome game! Yeah, so this game was, uh, I, I really liked the, uh, the alternate timeline idea. I think that was kind of fun. Um, I wonder if there's any more endings. I think it would have been interesting if we had more alternate endings. Uh, maybe I'm just being greedy because I love me a good alternate timeline. Uh, game so yeah I was uh yeah it was really good I really enjoyed it it's very it's kind of I it was less spooky than I thought it was gonna be I, I went into this thinking oh this is gonna be a super spooky mystery game mystery game and it and it kind of was in a way uh there was a lot going on a lot to unravel and uh yeah it was it was quite nice and enjoyable and charming all right, that brings us to the end of Beacon Pines. So thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, leave a comment and all that good stuff. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Stay nerdy, stay dorky. Bye.